Hi, this is Dear Damson and today we are going to do a Monet and the painting is Grand Canal and it's um, one of his um, expensive paintings. Um, let's pre-sketch and my canvas is an 8x8 eight eight or 8x8 eight eight inches or 20 by 20 centimeters. So what am I going to do? pre-plan my two areas. I have, if I am looking at my left side, I have more top part than bottom part. Um, so this is my half point. So my water line is approximately right here. Um, then we have the dome, which is right here. And the top part of the dome is almost equal to the bottom. So if I create a rectangle and I cut it in half, I have to fit my dome in that area. And then I have almost a two, two circles. So I have two lines here representing another part of that. And then this part, it's buildings. So I will have a few buildings coming out. This is pretty much the buildings right here. Almost four of them are lined up. The only way I can tell this is four buildings. Um, and there's a pole pretty much breaking this and coming to here almost like halfway this is my halfway of my water a little bit underneath and then there is my reflection in the water so this is coming down it goes all the way up and comparing the size of this this is everything else will be compared with each other. So whatever it's my first element I'm starting with, I will be comparing the smaller dome and the rest of the buildings with this and trying to fit it into my space. Um, and also because I have the half points, um, that will be another comparison. Now I cannot compare of for example, I can compare halfway here, but I cannot compare here um, on my on my side because his canvas is coming way out. So my middle is not necessarily his middle because I'm cropping part of his buildings. So I decided what will be my kind of a focal point on my painting. And then there is a dome that is almost half the size with a roof or point that is coming almost to here. So I'm going to bring it a little lower. This house that it's right underneath, it's a tiny bit lower than this one right here. And it's almost like this one has a bigger side and this one has a smaller side. We have one here that we can definitely see better and then we have a smaller shadowy on the back which means one building, two, three, four. Climbing up high, I am coming with the roof on the next building, almost halfway here. And it's a little bit laying down and it, the roof ends right at where almost my dome is ending. Um, there is that, bigger side. Everything on the bottom is very skewered. Um, this building that it's here, it's a little bit lower. We have chimney that it's coming right here and the chimney's height is almost to where my dome is ending and the thickness is good then some sort of a 
higher building tower something and it's hard to see what exactly it is on his painting. This one is laying down a little bit more. This roof is the end of this roof. Actually, the top of this roof is the end of this roof and then continues out. So I will continue my painting just in case I decide to, at one point, paint the whole image. But for our time, not gonna torture you guys through a very long tutorial. So the last building, it's kind of ending where um, there, this is the wall. There's a little bit space on the top. Not really well. Um, I can see what's happening here, but pretty much his buildings, his painting will be ending here. My canvas ends here. His ends a little bit further away. We have very skewered, uh, undefined bottom part. Same here. We have. Let's figure it out one tall pole that it's coming to here. It's leaning a little bit to the left. So if it's starting here, it goes to here, but it's leaning to the left. I am leaning it sideways. The top has almost like a decorative pointy top. The next one is, I'm comparing it to my main object, which is this dome. It's coming right here. And let's begin. I will probably use most of the times um, the angle brushes, not too much the little baby brushes because his, uh, his brush strokes I can do with pretty much this guy and look like it's a little brush because I'm going to use part of the brush, not the whole brush. So I love the angle brushes. Now in his painting, we want to see ton of brush strokes. We don't want to make anything um, smooth and even. We want to see those brush strokes. So I'm just cleaning my brushes because they still have the cleaner in them. So our sky, it's like purplish, purplish, bluish, pinkish almost. Let's get a bigger brush. I'm gonna just wet my canvas a little bit on one side and see if that's gonna help. Okay, so there is our sky. So I need to mix a little bit colors to kind of create um, what I'm looking for. So definitely I need white. I'm gonna steal a little bit of blue. Do you see how a little bit of blue goes very long way? So I'm gonna move from the blue I created, which I know it's a little bit darker than I want it. I'm moving a little bit to the side. So I'm not just putting my white on top of that blue and mixing it. I moved it to the side because that's too strong. I'm going to need tons of white and I'm going to create, I'm going to take a little bit of that dark red and with not wash brush pretty much right away created a, a purplish um, color, which I can use right away. Um, he's Painting seems very light on, um, so it's not heavy with paint, not huge, huge paint brush strokes with tons of paint. So there it is. 
Um, the brush strokes in the sky don't seem to have one direction. Uh, we will see that more when we go closer to the water. Everything's going to be more from side to side. So by using um, water, I made my canvas a little bit wet. It pretty much gives me an easy way to cover the surface. And I didn't make everything wet, just the part that I want to paint at this point. And because I have colors on my brush and I didn't overmix all the colors, my brush starts releasing different color than what I had on the front. So now it's getting a little bit too bluish purplish. And that's perfect. So I am doing, I'm gonna come out of this canvas here. This is my area. I'm gonna just extend it. Um, and this is pretty much where his painting is ending. So um, I'm just going to make it easy on me later on because now this color is perfect. Mixture, adding a little bit white to already my created purple and continuing to apply little brush strokes in different directions. I didn't try to fill in the whole area at once. I was sporadical. I was all over just adding brush strokes. Do you see what I mean with the little poles on the back? I know I'm gonna have to add them later because they were too thin for me to leave a space and try to go around that. a different purple so it's muddier purple Don't forget your brush strokes. Now there is a little bit of highlights that I'll add later. So the color red is present kind of only the, the roof that it's facing us. The rest is a shadow. So it's a darker, um, darker color. It's purplish. So this is what I'm trying to do here. And it's very interesting that it's invisible almost where it ends. There is no quite um, a line where it shows me the roof is ending right here. So I can go back to my uh, muted tones and kind of skewer where the roof is ending. Okay, so I'm going. And that purple is going to change into more bluish color. And the next part is right here. Yeah. Same happens with this area. Orangey, yellow, very, very light on this side because we have the sun hitting more on the right hand side. This building, it's really in shadows. I'm 
going back and forward just observing where can I add the color I just used for this in other areas uh, because that's going to make it much easier for me than trying to uh, mix constantly and try to match the colors so I'm playing back and forward um, to figure out what will be helpful in this situation if I'm using this color and it's present here and it's a very similar color to something here I will try to add it there and not wait for it later so also we have that blue color change the brush strokes let's get a little bit of green I think I'm gonna have to come back to the boats once that dries a little bit let's get a little yellow wash my brush case I'm using water to uh, tone down a little bit my colors um, what if you're painting with oils what you want to use is the thinner the paint thinner um, and kind of apply your paint together with it and then you're going to have a very thin layer of paint orange buildings a little bit of the orange hue right here reflection so we're breaking up be going left and right I will be breaking the reflection um, because the water has a movement so it's not flat as a mirror um, and that's gonna create the movement of the water this one has a little bit of the dark blue spread more so we're closer to this one the reflection will be uh, not so spaced out, but if something is further away, it gets spaced out more. Let's get this. And again, very muted colors. Different blues. All of a sudden, here is changing the direction. little brush strokes here and there just filling it in looking back and forward between my um, inspiration and what am I doing here
much lighter color. So to create the depth, uh, we want to have this area very light or much lighter than when we are closer and it looks very foggy almost. So I'm adding a little bit of a transparent white over certain areas just to give that far illusion. Presented just by little dots or smudges. Same with this one here. We have three windows. And that's pretty much it. Add a little bit of that and then continue down here. Still missing reddish color. There's a lot of purplish red, but light. purplish but keeping it heavier on the blue Again, I'm not trying to recreate this 100%. I'm trying to use it as an inspiration. So um, I might change a little bit, but I'm going to try to stay as close as possible. So the transition between the land and the water it's very vague let's get a little bit of the green inside my purple get white in there too i guess it's lighter So I'm trying not to have my brush super, super loaded. So I take a color, but I kind of wipe it a little bit, um, take it off. So this building's casting a little bit. 
bit of a color here. So does this pull? A little bit of the orange. All the way out here. This one does not have it. Then it has a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to go back with white. And continue down. So I haven't changed my brush. So pretty much I've been using, let's get some clean yellow. And I'm using the lemony yellow which is a very light yellow. Okay. Move my brush with white too. Go over the wet parts. brush and make this area wet and I have to stop right here I continued a little bit lower on my canvas I do that sometimes and since I'm almost using it it's kind of like a watercolor more blue to this side and this side will be a little more orangey See how I skipped little parts, but then I'll go back to them. Reddish to my purple, but it's transparent, so it will um, tone down. green bluish green more wiping my brush Getting more paint out and find a little red where I'm gonna put it too much so I'm going to just take away but this pinkish color will be beautiful right here 
because there is a pinkish red. Let's get the white back in. I need two more distinct light areas and shadow areas right here with this building. And then this building. And a little bit from here. down with some bluish dark strokes at the water Many dark areas on this side. But this one seems like shadowed. It's just building and building, so it's the same brush strokes going back and forward. And by diluting my color, it's going to give me a lighter color of the same blue. So I can use it. I will do the same. So I'm taking paint, but then I'm gently washing it. And when I dab it on to my uh, napkin, I have to barely see that color. And then I'm giving it a wash. You see how I had to wait for a little bit to get the colors I wanted in. So this is yellowish white. Uh, this is my chimneys. We are going to get one more color in here. Oh, 
here and a little there. Pretty much that's going to be until the end. Adding and taking away. Muting it. Making the transition between the colors less and less. is this pattern or or this area that um, you can see in the water is it coming to almost a point or is it spreading out and it's funny because right here even on his painting it's not very filled in so I almost gonna leave it kind of like a blurry look just like that just adding a little bit of green very very light orange And using the tip of the brush. area here big time tip of the brush just few uh, not so transparent whites and if it's a too wet if your surface is too white just let it dry Much deeper color of this close, super close pole. And on the top is almost like an indigo color. So here it is. We finished our Monet, and it's our improvisation of his painting. It's a little bit brighter, but that's me on my canvas so just make it the way you want it but kind of try to keep it as close as possible and what I was looking is um, the brush strokes just keeping that kind of as close as possible thanks for watching and we will see you next time same place